Right, so let's do this with strands. Um, I'm just going to, for the time being, just unplug this bit. So I'm just going to plug that back in like that so we can ignore the transferring bit again. Um, zoom in. So now when I hit play, it should be reapplied back to the static mesh where it was to begin with. So we're going to use a node to generate the strands called trails uh, in tab um, zoom in. tab trails create particle trails um, and this is a it's got an R on it so it's part of the rebel pack uh, so you need the rebel pack installed um, if you don't have the rebel pack installed um, I'm at the Bifrost forum here for the Autodesk um, Google that and I think if you go to welcome this pinned one at the top uh, da, 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 da. Uh, it's probably you can get it here um, and there you go it's this rebel pack for you want to download and install that and follow the installation you can see that little R is the same as what I've got here so you do need that if you can get this to work. Right, so let's just plug that in. Um, as far as I can tell, this doesn't work if you are generating particles over time. It goes a bit weird, see, like that. So what you need to do is you just need to have particles emit on the first frame only. Um, you may, I mean I've not got that many particles here, I might go back into my first graph and just generate some more. Uh, oh, I tell you what, uh, no I don't need to do that, I think I can just change, oh no they are count point but I'll just do them to one. There we go. So that should match the input of what's coming in and then when you hit play, whoa. It didn't work, did it? And that's because I forgot to put use in frame on. So now we'll get that. And you can see they're all sort of being generated across the surface. Um, so let's have a look at the particles trails. Start frame is sort of fairly, fairly obvious when you want them to start. Number of frames is how long the trails you want. So I'm going to do it for the full 500. So let's just do that. Um, so there we go. So at the moment they're white, but we can get them to inherit the colour of the particles. Um, and that's fairly simple here. All you've got to do is put a comma here and just write the name of the colour attribute, but not in capitals, lowercase. So, oops, it's gone inside that by hitting enter. So now you can see they take on the colour. So we can sort of make that a bit more pronounced actually. Let's do, uh, let's just make them get bluer quicker. When they get whiter quicker. Uh, I'll do what I do. I'll do that. I'll get rid of. Just do that point so you don't over egg it too much. Uh, they're going red. This should start going a bit purpley. Yeah, it's all getting purpley over time, aren't they? It's just one last fiddle. I'm just going to put that down to 0.5 so they're going to get less red quicker. So, boom, boom. there we go, they're getting bluer, as you can see, as they grow and get older. Right, so you can play around with that. So, we've got those, um, we've got our trails, 
So the only thing we have to change here from before is we just need to get the point positions from the trails and not from the particles. And then we need to um, set the point positions from the trails. So we're just going to reapply them back onto the trails and they will disappear. Uh, that's the particles, so let's just turn that off so it's not confusing. Um, we don't need to see them anymore. So now, there we go. So that's trails growing over an animate figure. Um, so just to clarify that, we've added trails we put the color node in there so it picks up the color. We have to change the particles to just emit on the first frame. Otherwise, when it generates more particles, the trails get confused and start joining up. Um, we're getting the point position from the trails rather than the particles. So we're feeding that in and we're just reapplying those point positions back onto the trails. And that's it.